it, it, it's actually the, the session that interests me is the one on supporting, supposedly supporting EV production and sales in the United States. This part of the bill is supposed to subsidize or grant, uh, you know, low cost loans to the production and processing and manufacturing of the, of the critical mineral based components of electric vehicles. And it's what it says is that at the very beginning, uh, 25 or 30 percent of all of those functions, including the production of the of the minerals, has to be done in the United States or in a country with which the United States has a free trade agreement. And that escalates to by 2026 to something like 80 percent of those of those things have to be done in the U.S. or or friendly related nations. So. From Washington's point of view, problem is solved. We took a big barrel of money, dumped it on on, on the people it required, and now we can go back and raise money for a re-election campaign. Of course, it's not going to work, and it's a disaster because it takes seven to ten years to develop a mine. America hasn't been processing critical minerals for hmm, generation or so. Uh, it's last time I checked. We have nobody processing cobalt and one company, for example, processing tungsten, nobody processing rare earths, nobody processing lithium. And I, excuse me for, for those nit pickers who are gonna say, well, wait, there's a small company in Chillicothe, Ohio. That does. We do not have anywhere near the capacity or the capability to do all of these things because ultimately what the car companies need is a battery. They need a battery that passes their tests and their tests take three years. Now, so to be, we have to build the battery first. Of course, we have no battery building plants in the United States. And please, nobody tell me, oh yes, uh, Tesla's producing them. The Panasonic works in Nevada, import cells from somebody else, you know, Asia, maybe Japan, Korea, and then they assemble them into batteries. So we have battery assembly plants. We don't have we don't have the supply chain to produce a battery. For example, nobody in North America produces a single gram yet of ESG compliant lithium. So starting with ESG compliant lithium, let's see, we have none. So let's take that to the next step, which is processing it into battery grade chemicals. Uh, we don't have anybody to do that either. Now let's say making cathodes and anodes. No, we don't do that. And now assembling those into a battery for a car. Mm, we, we really don't do that in the United States. Got a couple of places importing the, the final components, but we actually don't have the supply chain for that. Now I'm talking about right now, the car companies in America and, and some of the very large global uh, chemical companies have said, we're gonna build between seven and 10 battery plants in North America. And then it's gonna achieve a, a goal of about, let's say a hundred uh, gigawatt hours of battery capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, that's only enough for 1 million cars of the Tesla uh, Model 3 type. The last time I checked, the United States was selling internally up to 17 million cars a year. So. Uh, if, in fact, those battery factories are built and burned in and, and working by the end of this decade, I know they tell you a couple of years, but it takes quite a while. And uh, then by the end of this decade, we'd have enough capacity within the United States, if we can get the lithium, cobalt, manganese, nickel, et cetera, aluminum, uh, to produce one million cars. The United States has 300 million cars on the road. So let's see. Uh, carry the one. It's going to take 300 years to replace our, our internal combustion cars. So who knows what will happen in that period of time. I, I guess I can uh, cut this short and, and reduce the cynicism a bit by telling you that this isn't going to happen. What is going to happen is we're going to produce or acquire lithium, process it into chemicals, those chemicals will be made into anodes and cathodes. Those will be assembled into batteries. And over the next few years, there will be 
a select few car makers who've made lucky guesses on supply chains, and they'll be producing some electric cars. That's what's going to happen. Now, can somebody please tell me where the batteries are gonna come from for the stationary storage, grid smoothing, backing up solar and wind, et cetera, et cetera. Nobody has thought this out, Tracy. And so we're, we're, in, we're in for some tumultuous years. The investments already committed in North America are something between 50 and $200 billion. Now, the government in Washington can, can, can wave its baton and say, you will buy an electric car. We'll give you a deal, $7,500 uh, against your taxes, except one little problem. Uh, you have to have the raw materials and the batteries made in the United States or a friendly jurisdiction until 2030 when they must be made in the United States. In which case, we'll be able to use that $7,500 you thought you were going to get uh, for something useful like, you know, perhaps uh, an overnight stay at the Washington Hilton. But what we're not going to have to do is give you any of that money because you won't be able to find a car. Our car companies in America are already telling people who have said, hey, I'm going to get that 75 minutes. They say, well, uh, the battery in this car was made in China, so it doesn't qualify for, for the uh, $7,500. Gee, what a surprise. So in other words, the gentlemen and ladies in Washington who came up with this uh, lame idea have handed the Chinese you know, a, a gift, okay? Because uh, I, I have a feeling that if anybody could assemble batteries in America in the very near future, it'd be a Chinese company. But of course, we won't allow that, right? So nobody will do it. So I don't know what this bill was about, except to, I guess, increase inflation. I, I guess that's a good thing. I don't know. doesn't seem to be to me. But I don't think it's going to help anybody get an electric car.